I am so delighted, thrilled, and honored to be in conversation with Dr. Sultan Ismail. He is one of our country's preeminent ecologists, and the expertise, decades of expertise and experience that he brings to the table is unparalleled. Uh, he has written prolifically in so many articles, research papers, books, and another role that he wears very well is that of a teacher. He has brought the world of worms and world of life to so many students, inspiring them, and I'm sure at the end of this, you too will be equally inspired. So it's such a treasure to have you here, sir. Thank you. And uh, as Shamila pointed out, well, he comes from a background in the life sciences. I come from one in physical sciences. I'm an astrophysicist by formal training, but also uh, take a very keen interest in urban issues of waste management, you know, as well as writing about them. So yeah. today, I'm also looking forward to a very thrilling session with it as well. Um, in the next one hour, what we will primarily be focusing on are issues that impact all of us, you know, that are deeply affecting all of us, and that is of soil, safe food, and some of our perceptions around it. And because it is in this context, we will also be looking at the urban perceptions around it, right? And if, it would, if I could start off from the third one itself. After so many decades of independence, of urbanization, and all these other forces that we have faced, there is an increasing disconnect between us urbanites and the rural heartland where food is still grown. Most of us even don't even know where our food is now grown. You know, we just, they come in packaged stuff, we just order them off, we don't know what is seasonal anymore, where is it even coming from, right? There is an absence of um, information about this, and not just information, but also understanding and views which will shape these perceptions. So I'm looking forward to uh, Sultan sir speaking even about that. So with this disconnect which is presently there, right, between the urbanites as well as what is happening in uh, the rural areas where primarily food is grown, we are unable to see some of the elements that have grown into making the food, right? And soil forms one of its key things. So Dr. Sultan, I'm hoping will lead us through what it means to have a living soil, what it means to have a medium from which food can be grown for well-being, for not just self-sufficiency in uh, food as well as you know, making sure that we are independent in growing it, but also to have safe food, what it would mean to have that. So I will now uh, let Sultan sir lead us through some of it. Thank you, Mona. I think I already have. Uh, fortunately, I have been a teacher throughout my career, so I couldn't be chained to the chair. So mm -hmm. permit me to roam around. I like to take you through a journey. And just as Umar Badari said, in our beach, the difference is the land and the sea. This is an astrophysicist, I am a soil biologist. <laughs> These are the three most important characters that are required for us, air, soil and water. Basically, right from school days, we are being misguided in these concepts because we are taught about living and non-living. And when we talk about living and non-living and we classify and tell it to children, we tell air, non-living. We tell air is non-living. Am, am I right? Yes. And what do we call ourselves? Living. But we never tell our children that if we remove the non-living air from our body, what do we become? Non-living. That nobody tells us. Water is non-living. We are living. Remove the non-living water from our body, we become non-living. That's the relationship that exists. Unfortunately, we classify them as a thing, concepts. And two major things happen in our system. One is energy flows, whereas nutrients, they cycle. These two are very distinct components in ecology. Flow of energy and these two have, this has become a magic word today, echo. Echo means home, home. And if I study about the home, it is ecology. If I evaluate the home, it is economy. Logic is study and normy is numbers. So when this happens, there's a clash between these two, which is happening today in the ecosystems. There's a fight, whether it's ecology or economy, like the way you are fighting with the steel flyovers and things like that, right? And the clash, what happens, something burns, and what burns is ecology, because everybody wants economy to progress. Nobody's bothered about the ecology. In this concept, we also have what is called as biodiversity. We have wonderful biodiversity, and India, 
is one of the leading hotspots of biodiversity. This we should all be very clear when we start working on these concepts. And in this biodiversity, we have large variety of vegetables, extremely large diversity of vegetables. And you take one single vegetable, we have several varieties in it. You take Katrika, you have several things. You have Vendaka, you have Ladies Finger, you have uh, same. you have all things, you have varieties, varieties that we produce so many types of our own crops. Suddenly the Western people came over here, the Britishers suddenly started naming things in a different way. They called it as cow pea, pigeon pea, chick pea and uh, horse gram and we thought animals should be eating it and not we. And we lost very good proteins in the, in the bargain. And we have a largest grade of uh, domesticated animals. And in this one, you know, like this confusion started today. We have, this is our cow. Boss is the generic name, like Homo sapiens. Boss is for cattle. Indicus our, our cattle and Taurus is Western cattle or European cattle, like the zodiac sign Taurus. This is the difference. This is our Indian cattle, our Indian bulls, and these are the Western bulls. The problem, this is boss bibalis is our buffalo, water buffalo. That is our, uh, this is our desi and this is pardesi. <laughs> That's the difference between the two. Now, in this difference, what happens, what, what recently happened in Tamil Nadu, which you have a reading in the newspapers, is a jelly cutter. And that is the bull. The main aim of Indian tradition of maintaining a bull was for its agility. For its agility. How agile it will be. At the same time, how docile it will be. It will be agile. It is first firm. It is fierce but domesticated so that even a child can play with it. That is our idea of a bull. Whereas the western concept of a bull is how heavy it will be and how much of meat it will get. So now I hope we are clear as to what is our biodiversity compared to what is their biodiversity. This is 1,293 kilos and they are very proud of it. So obesity is part of not human beings alone in the western country, it's also with animals. Fine. So today our biodiversity is threatened. Yes, Mona? So where do I start now? So what are some of the, like how you pointed out, what are some of the primary attitudes that have drawn into decreasing this biodiversity. I faced my PhD viva very easily. I'm worried about this lady over here today. <laughs> <laughs> what is soil? What is soil? This is a question which I frequently ask. Soil is? Guess? Audience? Soil itself is food. That's what is giving me. When I look at this soil as a foot, they suddenly woke up internationally and said 2015 as the International Year of Soils. <laughs> suddenly they woke up because the soils were fading. Now soil, is it a mineral matter or a living matter? This is the concept which I like to ask you people. Agriculture University clearly says that soil is a mineral matter. Padhi na kitab mein? Kitab mein padhe ya nahi padhe? Haan, padhe. But when I go through it because of systems, I, I, I consider a living organism if it has a digestive system, a circulatory system, a respiratory system, an excretive system, a reproductive system, a nervous system. Mitti ko hai kya sir? Hey? Hey? When a dog is found dead on the surface of the soil, in two, three days it starts stinking. If I cut a pit, put the dog inside, bury it, does it stink? Why? Because it's getting digested. Yes, it's getting digested. The same thing, microorganisms are there. They are also doctored in your stomach, microorganisms. Mm -hmm. So what do you call your system as? Digestive system. system. So soil has a? Digestive system. <laughs> Logically, yes. Respiratory system, Kapil Dev Ji jute leke batate the. I hope the senior people would have seen the advertisement. Apne shoes ke jute bhi saans lete hain. He used to advertise, right? The jute sans lete hain kya mitti sans nahi lege. Oxygen goes inside, carbon dioxide comes out. Right? Whenever you have a problem, supposing uh, you, you get hurt in your leg, the doctor gives you a tablet. Do you give it to the leg or you eat it? You eat it. Then how does the medicine go there? Circulation. At home you are growing plants in your pot. Do you pull up the plant every time and feed the root or do you put it on the top and it goes automatically over there? because it has a circulatory system. Whenever we have a break, we go to those rooms over there. Right? In the same way, soils, if they have too much of salt, they don't take it inside. They bring it and throw it outside. Soil has an excretive system. Saline soils have a, a patch of salt on top of the soil. 
IVF is picking up, in vitro fertilization with uh, sterility taking over, fertility centers in every street today, right? IVF is picking up. Even though IVF is there, the zygote has to be implanted in the uterus of the mother. Only then it can grow. So your tissue culture plants, forget hydroponics, have to be planted in the soil if they have to grow further. So soil has a reproductive system. I used to talk only about this five. Suddenly it occurred to me whether soil has a nervous system. Oh. Wow. You know, if you don't study well in Tamil Nadu, they say, Poda mannu. <laughs> because soil, mati. Right? So does soil have a brain? As the author, I'm not supposed to ask questions, is it? Soil has a brain. I don't know. Yes, soil has a brain. Soil has a brain. You put anything in the soil, it can decompose. It can decompose. But you put a seed in the soil, it will not decompose, it will germinate. Soil can distinguish what it has to decompose and what it has to germinate. That is the quality of soil. And in this quality of soil, we come into this, our own tradition, where we call the Bible. Every tradition was related man, to the concept. Because in those days, they declared it as religious or God, so that people will protect it. Now, how often do we remember the cow? Only once a year. And that we call it as Matupongal in Tamil Nadu. Everywhere, Sankranti, Mahasangra, everything. Now, during this function, which part of the cow is worshipped? The head part or the back part? Chinnasamiji, you have to write a lot of poems about this. <laughs> and Nagaraji, you write it in the city wide. Right. Let him write it in the tradition way. Right. Now, we do it on the back side of the cow. Why is it done on the back side of the cow? Because Crowder. Lakshmiji is supposed to sit on the back of the cow. Why should Lakshmiji sit over there at the back side of the cow? Because it told the farmers that the richness from the cow is from this side of the cow and not from the head of the cow. Wow. The dung is the most important contribution of manure and cow's urine is an excellent pest repellent. So the farmer's resource was from this side of the cow, so the cow is worshipped on the back side of the cow. And in this part, it was also used for ploughing the cow. And when we use a cattle to plough, at that time what happens? The soil comes up, aerates, aerates. Today when I use a huge tractor, soil compacts, compacts. And when compaction takes place, all the air inside the soil escapes. When the soil air escapes, soil organisms die. And when soil organisms die, mitti ki khushba chale jati hai. Mitti ki khushba hai kya? Kya mitti ki khushba hai ya nahi hai? Hai ya nahi hai? Bilkul nahi. Mitti ko koi khushba nahi hoti hai. You take the soil, dry it in the sun for two days, smell it, you don't get any smell. You don't get any smell. Barisha Nisati, no? I'm going to send you all back to school now. Our teachers are very clearly told, water is colorless, tasteless. Odorless. So, pani ki koi khushbo nahi hoti hai, mitti ki koi khushbo nahi hoti hai. Lekin mitti ki khushbo hai, because of soil organisms which live in the soil. So, if unless soil organisms live in the soil, I don't get that. Because soil should have soil air, modern concept does not tell so. Soil air, we have to have. But what we are trying to do in our country is just dump. I want to rush through the slides because I want to talk more to you people in the limited time. Varna Mahasa sheets batha dete. I wanted somebody to take away those sheets, but they forgot to take it out. We use about 2 crore tons of chemical fertilizers every year in India. 2 crore tons and about 1 lakh tons of chemical pesticides every year. And our government says that our productivity is increasing. Mona, our productivity per acre is decreasing. Absolutely. Total productivity because of different resources. But per acre per hectare, people who are working with agriculture already know that farmers are losing. Since 2000, our productivity is de decreasing. This is how our farmers take pesticides. This is how when they spray, the pesticide goes down into the groundwater. Groundwater is getting contaminated. And one of the farmers from Madan Play, as an example, this guy showed me his farm, beautiful farm, all tomatoes, lovely tomatoes, has a border crop, lovely flowers. What are these flowers? Guess? Marigold, 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 marigold. Marigold is an excellent pest repellent, excellent pest repellent. That's why they keep it in the temples. I congratulated, he laughed at me. He laughed at me and said, no man, I grow them because there's a temple nearby, they gave me a lot of dabu. I said, what do you use for tomatoes? He said, he uses endosulfan for tomatoes. Right? This endosulfan corrodes his hand. This endosulfan kills people. This endosulfan destroys the health of people. And this, at the same time, we burn a lot of things 
on surface. I think this is a common thing which we see in our Absolutely. country. They burn garbage right? as well. Yeah, because we thought uh, when we burn, we get ash. Yes. But what burns is important, and this is burning. Mm -hmm. And this gives me dioxin, which goes into my soil, which is completely eroding my soil. And when we look at these components which are happening over there, on one side we talk about soil fertility and whenever any of you please take some soil, give it to the government department to analyze the soil for soil fertility. Whenever I see rain, I get shouting. She is the one who shows those banners from there. Right? No, no, I find right. Now, whenever uh, people, whenever you give it to soil for testing, they will say so much is the fertility and they will recommend what fertilizer should be added. So, fertility is related to fertilizer whereas our concept of India was soil health. That was how much of microorganisms and humus was there. That was our culture. In our culture, we used to grow trees. You go to any old temple, not the new ones, the old temples, old masjids, old churches, you will always find trees associated with it. You will always find ponds associated with it. The sacred group concept existed, which protected our biodiversity. Today, we look at tree like this. If we cut, how much of money we will get? Road expansion program is one example. And when I cut it, and all the soil gets barren, when the rain comes, soil splashes. And this top soil completely goes away to the soil, to the waters, to the rivers. Sir, what is this? Are yaar, bolo na. Ye kya hai? Dharti hai. Ye? Ye for? Apple. For a moment we will imagine apple to be the earth. Is that clear? Quickly. Now, what is this, sir? Yeah? Earth. Earth. Now, this earth, I am cutting it into four bits. This earth, the speaker is there. Right. This earth, I am cutting it into four. Quickly, I do it so that you understand the concept. How many pieces, sir? This is what should be sharp in observation in science. There is one in this hand. Now, how many pieces, sir? Three. Three is what? How much percentage? 75% of the earth is roughly covered with water. 25% is land. This land, I am cutting it into two. This land, I am cutting it into two. One piece. Yes, land not suitable for human inhabitation. Like deserts, the Antarctic, the Arctic, the ice caps. One piece suitable for human inhabitation. This, I am cutting it into four. Studying biology is important. If you don't get a job, you can at least make fruit salad. <laughs> Three pieces. Three pieces. Suitable for human inhabitation, but not suitable for agriculture. Now please imagine, 1 by 32 of the earth. You saw the apple? This is the portion. This alone is suitable for human inhabitation as well as for agriculture. From this, let me remove the peel. Top soil. This is the top soil. This is what is giving me food to eat. This is what is giving me food to eat. For your information, nature takes roughly 250 years at an average to develop one inch of top soil. Now please think what we can do for the soil. What all we can do for the soil. This is what is important for us. So I, I, you want to interrupt? I'm no, yes. yes. I was just thinking, this is such a magical, precious resource, right? If it takes so many years along with water, this is such a sustaining life force. And we have brought it down today to such a situation like how you pointed out, continuous, you know, pumping of fertilizers and pesticides. So where do we stand with soils today? Soils 50 too. years ago, if you looked at it as food security and, you know, we have to, green revolution was basically championed because we thought we need self-sufficiency in food. So today, if it is the soil health that needs to become the focus instead of just increase in production, how can we sort of reverse this trend? We have to because uh, food security, we are very, 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 very far from food security. We are, our governments are talking about food security, but we are far behind in food security. We are occupying a 97th position among 116 countries. We are very bad into it. One of the ways of doing it is to produce enough amount of manure which can go back. Because soil should have soil should have organic matter into it. We talk about NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, potash. But we should have humus and organic matter. And roughly with our climate, 5% organic matter means lovely soil. At least 2% should be there. Today, national average is 0.4%. 
So if I have to improve my soils to be self-sufficient, self-resilient, then I have to put in something. One of the ways is to bring them back again. Bring them back again. And if I look at the worms, the whole world contains three types of worms. I will not go into the details, just for your information. One which lives on the surface of the soil. These are the ones who cook the food for us, for the soils. Now, they are the ones who use all the organic matter, convert it into compost, which uh, uh, Vani, you have been doing and all these people who have been doing over here, is to convert this into compost. The second group which makes burrows in the soil, upper niche, this is the one which takes your medicine from the mouth to the leg. They create these channels, the circulatory system of the soil. The third group of worms which live inside the soil are the ones which keep moving horizontally so that the soil gets smoothened and softened. So three important roles by three group of worms and these are the three common worms of our own country. South India. Ye upar wale, in beach wale, ye niche wale. Three best worms. Ab, these are the uh, ones which are used for composting purposes today, the surface worms. Our composting is very simple, very easy. You just have enough amount of uh, pre-digested organic matter aur usko upar ek cake rakh dijiye. Cake is your cow dung cake. And you will find all of them multiplying very easily. And uh, then you get vermicompost. And that is vermicompost. That's vermicompost. And this vermicompost, when you look at it and you ask, where can I get cow dung cake? It's available on Amazon.com. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so funny, you know, like in 1978, I started this research on earthworms. I was one of the pioneers to start for the country. The term Vermitech was coined by me for the world. So, you know, like when, when we start looking at those days, the availability of these materials, in case you don't have cow dung, forget about it. Khatta dahi, very sour curd, which becomes yellow. It has all the microorganisms which you can use it. There are so many other things which you can use. That's vermicompost. No, please continue. I continue. <laughs> Aha, question paper free. Now, you know, like we, we have also lost the concept as to what to, where to water the plants. Now, normally certain mistakes which we do, I want you people to overcome. When it rains and I hold the umbrella, water does not fall on my head, it falls around me. If I don't have an umbrella, I stand under a big tree, shade of a big tree. Then also, a few drops may fall on my head, but mostly water falls around the tree. Why does it fall around the tree? Because nature is an excellent teacher. It falls over there because the roots which drink are there. And what do we do? In many universities, we water here near the trunk and we say that nothing is growing. Because it takes time for the nutrients to move from here to here and then taken up by the plants. So if you are growing trees, please see to it that you make trenches near the canopy of the plant and not around the trunk of the plant. You will get very good plants. How much of water is required for the plant? Can you give me some water to drink? Look at that. She gives me in a glass. Thank you. <laughs> right? Six footer, sir. I am six foot tall and I am almost 80 kilos in weight. And she gives me a glass of water. And for a plant, what do we do? In case I go and tell that I have come here, I want to have a bath, you will give me water in a bucket. And if I tell that, I am fed up, I want to commit suicide, you will show me the lake. <laughs> right? Now, for the six-footer, if one glass is enough, how much of water is required for your plants? Many people have this wrong habit of saying that you open the tap and leave it for the water. Plants grow better when there is a stress for water. So, we require soil moisture, not soil water. Soil moisture ruins the plants. Soil water, sorry, ruins the plants. Soil moisture is what grows the plant. And how much of soil is required? Our brain is so bad. Sir, I live in an apartment. I can't grow any plants. These are the plants that come from the sweet box. 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 Sweet growing out of it. So if I can sort of intervene here, because you're talking about water. We've now third consecutive year of drought, mm -hmm. right? The farmers are facing serious issues of irrigation, 
because they're also growing crops which are water intensive, right? Especially in the southern states itself, if you see, you know, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Andhra. So is it that the nature of agriculture itself in these uh, states have changed, that they have switched over to growing these water intensive crops, and now we are even considering interlinking of rivers, for example, right? We even want to alter the course of it. So how would, how would today's agriculture change the way we are looking at water? And how would we want to use it as a resource to further enrich soil? Instead of, you know, now we have an irrigation ministry, we have a, a soil is not even, it doesn't even get as much attention as even water issues. Moving away from this, if I have to tell you, uh, the moment we dig canals, the canals are all mud-based canals. And water starts moving even from the sides. Most of the places, like for example in Haryana when they did the Indira Gandhi canal, all the soils around that canal became saline soils because for so many days we have been dumping so much of salts into it. Nitrate is a salt of nitrogen, phosphate is a salt of phosphorus, potassium is a salt of potash. Now all these salts start coming up and the soils became saline soils. Okay, I ask you a question. If you eat when you in case when you are taking food, if your food has too much of salt into it and you have put it in your mouth, the first thing you will ask immediately is what? Water. Water, water. The same thing happens to soil. If you put too much of salt into the soils, the soils need water. water. So if you want to manage soils without much water, then you have to provide material which retains water, not which absorbs water. So the biomass becomes... Biomass becomes... Crucial. That is what is important, which we have to take it. So these things you can have it done and very simple. Uh, these are the things which uh, the worms create. We call them as drillospheres. They make these holes, the circulatory system of the soil. And based on this, this liquid fertilizer was created by us for the world. We call it as vermi wash. Entire procedures are on my website. Uh, everything is for free download. Websites, apps, everything is for free download for you people, for the com community. This was the first barrel I developed. It costed me 200 rupees in 1982. And uh, no, no. You gave me this podium at 11.45 and you have given me 45 minutes, which means 15 minutes. Keep it back, please. No, no. Right? This is Panjakavya. You can't argue with a teacher. Ne? It's very <laughs> this Panjakavya, you can prepare it. All the procedures are available. Panjakavya procedures. We have done lots of experiments with vermi wash Panjakavya. The xylem vessel cells expand. We have worked at the chromosome level of plants. We have worked at the molecular structures of these compounds. We are not just talking out of passion. All these details are available. You can make all these components there itself in your home from wasted vegetables, excellent fermentation materials, from fish waste you can prepare lovely chemicals which can go into the lovely sprays, from egg limes, for a jiva amrti, or even for seeds we make use of this uh, termite soil. It has excellent pest repellent properties. All these details, you can convert waste into compost, you can do it, you can prepare it. We use cow dung, that's the simplest way. Cow dung slurry is the best, easiest way, put up the slides, have it done, the temperature increases, then the uh, unwanted microorganisms are killed, unwanted insects are killed and after about 15 days you turn it over, steam comes out and then after 30 days it comes down, it's soft, smooth, lovely biryani which you can give it for the earthworms. <laughs> now this is given to the earthworms, the earthworms eat it, we take it out, sieve it and that is vermicompost which goes into the soil. Very simple procedures, you can use these things at home, you can use these pots and do it at home. You don't need to buy a thing, this is what I want to tell. Many people have this component, you buy this from me, I don't want to name any product. But this product sale has picked up, but you can use anything. This one, what I teach people is, have these flower pots, they have holes at the base, put some stones into it, Sunday's waste vegetable, cut it, put it, little bit of dahi, a little bit of gober and then a uh, little bit of mitti. Mondays in Monday, Tuesdays in Tuesday. So you come back after seven days, partially composted. Once in a month, turn it over. The whole, all the seven pots get filled up. It takes almost three to four months for a small family today. Ab jab fill ho gaya, leave another fifteen days. Baad mein ek mein jo hai bacon ke beans, ek mein uh, tomato ke beans, ek mein lady's finger beans, and your organic garden is ready in your home. Simple procedures, simple, or you just make a pit like this and grow it. You put all the vegetable waste, everything, then on the inner side you grow sag, on the outer side you grow your uh, lady's finger and bygan and all those things. You harvest your vegetables, you also do waste management. All the simple things can be done. You choose your bin. Either you use a cement concrete one or you use a plastic crate, but you must put holes at the base. 
घर पे कहेंगे किस पागल ने कहा कि छह सौ रुपए देकर आपको क्रेट लेके उसमें छेद डालने के लिए तो आप लोग लकड़े का बिन ले यूज कर लीजिए द प्रॉब्लम इज इन अबाउट एट टू टेन मंथ द बिन इट विल गेट कंपोस्टेड और पुराने टायर जो आपके पास है उसमें भी कर लीजिए हु इज प्रिवेंटिंग यू डू इट इन एनी थिंग डू इट इन एनी दिस आर सम ऑफ द कंटेनर्स टू रेडीमेड कंटेनर्स आर अवेलेबल ऑनलाइन कुछ भी कर लीजिए आप दिस वॉज डिजाइन बाय अस फॉर द पोल्यूशन कंट्रोल बोर्ड नाउ ऑल द इंडस्ट्रीज आर रिकमेंडेड दिस डिजाइन विच ऑल्सो हैज होल्स एट द बेस वेरी सिंपल डिजाइन दिस फॉर गॉड रेज दट्स डन बाई माई स्टूडेंट हु टू कप कंसल्टेंसी ओवर द फर्स्ट कंपोस्टर एंड देन गिविंग इट टू द वर्म्स Farming, natural farming, organic farming, we are all working towards non-chemical, non-poisonous food. That's all. Let let our aim be one. Let us move from crop-centric to farmer-centric agriculture. This is very important for me. Uh, I, I I won't spend my time. I won't take time because I'm trained not to spend time. Only take-home messages. You people eat a lot of kesari. I know that along with upma. Rava with salt is called as. Rava with sugar is called as. why kesari should not be white in color is it the color powder which is available in the market in the name of kesar is not kesar it is a chemical yellow sex which causes cancer please avoid it all this colored food today is causing a lot of problems please come out of it please learn what is happening commercially we used to tie this at homes mango leaves we switched over to plastic and today mango leaves are sold on amazon.in in the name of mangifera indica mangifera indica and the cost is 5509 rupees for 25 green leaves are you serious farm leaves yes please 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 understand commercialization i used to use these two for my tooth for my teeth today they ask me whether i have salt whether i have charcoal this is what i used because this is what has happened in our life noses smell feet but today things have changed only one question i want to ask you before i wind up when it rains and the water comes down whom does this this water belong to soil soil dr ma in case you leave a pot over there and you collect the water whom does that pot water belong to
Honestly, tell me. Don't give me a logical or psychological or philosophical explanation now. When somebody keeps a pot and collects that water, whom does that water belong to? It actually belongs to the soil. <laughs> Don't talk all this philosophy. Yeah, Arupa Owner of the pot. Oh, owner of the pot. I gave you that pot. Now, does it belong to you or to me? <laughs> I gave you the pot. Yeah, but the pot is. The pot or the water? You don't have another pot. This is what multinational corporations are trying to do by giving us seeds. Please be careful. Please be careful as what is happening around us. All the best to you people. Uh, to you, to my, to my wonderful, wonderful pretty host whom I did not allow her to talk. Maybe, maybe uh, uh, very rarely, you know, you don't allow a partner to talk. And uh, from on my behalf, my book to you. Thank you. All the details are available over here. All the details are available. How to prepare, how to do in iOS, in uh, Android app. All the details are available. Plus, this, this particular simple task, great concepts, is available in all. Is a, a blog or an app with 100 science experiments for children, with 45 animations, free download, free usage, because sponsored by the Government of India, Department of Science and Technology. I had the opportunity to work with uh, Dr. APJ on this. So, they are all available for children to do experiments at home using kitchen material and not big, big science, to learn basics of science. Thanks very much and uh, sorry for not allowing you to talk much. And, uh, no, I will open it up for uh, Q&A. No, uh, Q &A. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, uh, but before that, if I could just take off from the last part that you were mm. speaking about, you know, the entire commercialization that has taken over mm. uh, agriculture. This has also led to, in some sense, research as well as key information becoming funded by these agencies, right? So is it a case now where if you want to make a crawl for more non-chemical farming, right? For that to become in mainstream and not having the organic farmers or any non-chemical farmers. Today they're in a state where they have to pay for certification, they have to go through the hassles of all of that. For us to reverse the trend, do we have, do you see enough research literature? Do you see enough popular literature being written about this non-chemical movement, for this to once again become the norm, and for the chemical farming to become something that is the exception? I, I do agree to you. There's a lot of information available now, rather, uh, when compared to what we started in 78 and 80s, when Arise was formed, Agriculture Renewal in India. The problem is, uh, if you know the farmer, just buy it from them. If you know somebody who buys from the farmer, whom you know is genuine, just buy it from them blindly. And uh, uh, if you want to have it certified, international certification is very expensive, very, very expensive. So OFI, OFI is Organic Farming Association of India, OFI.org is their website. If you go into their website, you can go into PGS, if anybody is willing to do uh, organic farming, PGS is participatory grading system. And that is done by OFI at a very, very throwaway price, just about 1000 rupees or something, or 1500 rupees. And you get a certificate from the Indian OFI Organic Farming Association that it is certified organic. So uh, that's one more thing which is there. And uh, people are aware and people are buying it. One thing is uh, when too many things come in the market, the question of suspicion comes in our mind as to whether it is genuine or not. For that, we have to sometimes buy from people whom we know. That's very so important. Farmer is, uh, uh, buying directly from the farmer would help you more. It also opens up the markets to that. You know? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, any questions? Anything no else questions. Itself could, that, uh, that you would love to speak about? Who? Anything further that you know you had to rush through? Look at her. <laughs> the way she's standing from there. <laughs> no, no, no. Is it over or do we have one more or two more minutes? No, it's not at twelve thirty. I have two minutes more. Oh, I don't know. Uh, just outreach to schools, perhaps, because catching them young is always a good thing, right? Yeah, schools nowadays in, uh, uh, I think to a large extent, in some, most of these um, places have started agriculture as one of the hobbies for children. As a kid, we used to have it in schools in those days. Every class was given a patch of land and we were asked to grow some plant or other just for the fun of it. But today, they are bringing it up. Uh, there was one school which I recently visited in Chennai, HLC International School, and uh, they had this as a compulsory subject where children were taught on how to do composting, how to grow plants. And they were growing paddy, they were growing millets, they were growing everything over there inside the school co compound curriculum. There's one more school in Krishnagri run by Sanat Kumar who is doing all this also. 
may be some schools in karnataka will also be doing it unless you bring it as part of the curriculum children will not be interested and even if children are interested parents don't allow parents don't allow because parents try to create such a dummy pressure on teachers and the schools saying that you teach them don't allow my child to put their hands into the soil yes. and things like that dirt so we have to come out of it means you bring it into the curriculum that's the best way you can do it so the total component of agriculture in india how much of it is organic, organic? now roughly just around some 3 to 5 percent uh, now at this point of time people claim 10 percent 12 percent but honestly speaking it's not much widespread because we have still follow the concept of agriculture loan and loan is not money loan is the government gives you chemical fertilizer chemical pesticide seeds and little bit of money so it's those because of an industry cartel or is because of a it's industry cartel and industry now has been told that you must it's being recorded so they want it so industry uh, now what they want is uh, industry wants uh, the government has said that every industry who sells chemical fertilizer should also sell some amount of organic uh, manure so these fellows are now trying to trap all those people who are handling waste from cities uh, that waste can be converted into manure which can available which will be available for them at a throwaway price so that they will show that they are also selling manure without even testing the compounds we have to be very careful because city waste sometimes which is handled by bigger corporations even if say a few tube lights are broken into it can contribute to mercury contamination and heavy metal contamination we have to be very careful about it ma'am for you i'll just wind up with that Please sit down, ma'am. Uh, it has been uh, promoted in many Western countries. Urban farming has uh, becoming part of the urban economy. Yes. And I think that is where India is not uh, really looking at. Uh, should we have urban uh, agriculture? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, terrace farming is picking up a lot, but the problem is many people are afraid whether my terrace will bear the load, because uh, we did not construct our houses planning to have a garden on the top. For such people, my humble request is, every house has this uh, load-bearing wall. The wall which is around the building is the load-bearing wall. Within three feet of the load-bearing wall, you can happily do agriculture. And that load-bearing wall within the three feet, it's better you take, make use of more amount of cocoa peat rather than total soil. You mix cocoa peat with soil, the weight becomes lesser. And you can have some wooden stems down so that the weight gets spread. Uh, my, my, uh, my. In, the, in the overall battle of corporate versus farmer, any pessimistic or optimistic? I have always been optimistic because when I started Vermi Composting, I was told, I was called as a mad fellow by Agriculture University. Uh, one of the pioneers who start, they called me a mad chap. Today they are teaching it in their syllabus with my book as a reference. It takes time. So let us wait for it. That's thank all. You. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Packed with information. Yeah, thank you. Sorry. Let's Sorry I this. spread uh, the Just on the lighter side, I was trying to bully you, but I wanted some time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all thank so you much, much for being a part of this.